and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, we get a lot of new subscribers all the time and we are very delighted with that. It does mean that occasionally we need to recap on some of the some of the basics, like how we do our notation, um, what we're looking for in classic Sudoku. And that gives us a chance to look at a classic Sudoku. Um, this one was sent in by Eric recently, who said um, that this is the sort of Sudoku where he sometimes runs into trouble here. Having done the Snyder notation that we recommend, he just hits a brick wall and can't make any further progress without noting candidates for every cell. So I thought we'd have a look at this one today. Um, I understand it's a relatively straightforward puzzle, so everybody ought to be able to finish it. I'm not trying to be patronizing or to insult Eric. Um, I do think it's just an opportunity to have a go at a puzzle um, and practice the techniques. And I will explain what we're doing as we go through it. So um, first of all, let me congratulate all those 330 people who finished um, the Seven Wonders of the World Sudoku Hunt within its three weeks. Um, we have published the solution video. That's on Patreon for $3 Patreons. Um, do do watch the full two hours 22 if you want, or just pick and choose the bits that might have helped you get through one or two of the trickier puzzles. Um, it's, it's an absolutely, uh, it was an intriguing puzzle hunt, to be honest. There were lots of different styles of Sudoku, lots of the variants we do regularly, one or two uh, new ones, one or two twists. So do have a look at that if you're interested. You can still try the hunt, of course, if you don't want to watch the video first. Um, and that's all on Patreon, along with lots of other content that we've put up there. And we're looking forward to the April monthly reward puzzle as well, um, which I believe is by Demono. So that's going to be good too. Now, um, let's have a look at this then. So Eric sent this in. I'm not sure where it's from. Um, he found it on his phone. So there we go. Now, the Snyder notation that Eric's talking about is what we tend to put in the corners of cells. And this is where a number can be restricted to only one or, sorry, to two places, sometimes three, within a box. So look at those two eights in columns nine and eight. Where does the eight go in column seven? Obviously not in these boxes. So it's in one of these two cells. And we tend to mark that in the corner, just to give us an idea. We reserve the central points of the cell for um, digits where we can reduce that individual cell to those candidates, which is a different type of logic. So let's just carry on. I'm kind of looking up the columns for ones that are repeated within boxes. So here, threes are there. So I'm going to fill in a three possibility in those two cells. The ones are all done. Um, sixes, though, can go in one of the top two up here. What else have we got here? Three, six, one. Oh, nines are repeated there. So we'll put a nine in there. And I'm being fairly methodical about this. Um, now, we have a slight twist here. So we can put in twos and threes where they could go. They're repeated here, twos and threes. Now, the other digits aren't repeated in these three boxes, nine, seven, six, five, and four. However, this pattern is locking off some of this box. So four can only appear down in these three cells. There's a four there to restrict it to those two, and that means in the top box it's in one of those. So we'll try and pick up patterns like that as well. Now I'm going to look across. We can restrict twos. Nines are fully done in these rows. Ah, and this is great. Now, I've just restricted twos to these two cells, but look at three exactly the same two cells are the only place it can go given these threes and these twos. They're kind of acting like pairs. So now I'm going to take that corner mark out and put in a two three pair. This means that for each of these cells the only candidates for that cell are two and three and whenever I see those they're sitting very much within, they're not just within the same box in this case, they're actually together. So I ought to be able to focus on the fact that they're driving every other number out of those two cells. Um, let's just carry on with the methodical approach. Six is there. I hope I haven't missed any. No, there don't seem to be any other repeats apart from three, which is fully done in boxes four, five, and six. Then down here we can do 
two and four and nine, they've all got repeats. And there we go, that's the initial work on um, digits that are repeating in these, in these kind of shoots of boxes, in these um, strips. Now, what does that tell us? Well, we haven't actually got very far, and I see why Eric gets a bit stuck at this point, because now he's thinking, well, do I have to pencil mark every digit in every cell like these twos and threes? I've just noticed that five is ruled out of those, so I'm just going to pencil mark it in up there. Four also there is restricted to just two cells. They're actually offset within the box. Sometimes that can be very helpful, so we'll see if that proves right. Now, what I'm going to say to Eric, actually, is that what you can do is start marking in candidates where they're really restricted. And I like to do that now, because I now know this is a bit more difficult than a really straightforward classic. I'm going to look for cells where there are only two candidates. And look down here. We've got five candidates in the box. We've pencil marked where two of them are restricted to. So there are only two other candidates for this cell, so it has to be seven or eight. Um, this one as well, it can see two, three, six, nine, one in the column, seven, four in the row. So that's only got two candidates. That one's not quite so good yet. Um, let's just keep going with this kind of approach. Just looking around the grid. So, yeah, here's another one. This is two or eight. Six. This one is four or eight. There are quite a few of these cells in this puzzle. We've got lots of different digits looking at different places. And again, in column seven, there's a five or seven there. And, and a five or seven here. And now we've hit pay dirt. That looks like it's potentially really useful. Five and seven are both the only candidates for both of those two cells. And we haven't candidate marked every cell in the grid, which would take ages and leave a huge mess of numbers. But we have found something very useful. So we know that the other three cells in the column are one, six, and eight. So that one can't be an eight. I'm going to put all three pencil marks in there because it is a kind of triple that we've found. But the really good thing about that is what is being kept out of these cells now? Well, seven is. Five obviously couldn't have been in them anyway because of that five. But now that we've got a five, seven pair here, seven can't be in these cells. That seven says it can't be in those. The two, three pair that we found rules it out of there. And suddenly, from quite an unpromising box, we've got a seven into it. So let's hope we can use that. Um, well, maybe not. We might need to do some more similar work. This has now become six or eight. And, ah, oh, this is one, six, or eight. Now, again, I wouldn't normally mark a triple candidate, but in this case, that's bringing up a triple. And what that's identifying is that there's only one place for four in row three. Now, I might have been able to see that by picking up on the fact that those three fours are sealing off three of the open four cells in the row. But it was easier for me to spot it as a triple. So that's what happened there. We're left with 289 to go in column 6. Now, what else have we got? Um, that's quite interesting. Oh, yeah, 4. Sorry, 4 has been um, absolutely constrained into box 5. Uh, we can also place 7 in box 5 as well because of that 7 and that 7 ruling out all of those cells. So in goes 7. That gives us seven in the bottom box. Uh, we've got two, eight, and three to go down there. Maybe I'm not going to pencil mark those yet. Five and eight only to go in column four. And now we're kind of just able to prey on the areas where we're getting quite a bit of fill. So seven and seven, this is quite neat. And that seven is ruling out all of those cells in box six. So seven can go in there. This original seven five pair that got us started off has now been resolved. Now that gives us three or seven there. Not quite sure what to do with that yet. Um, four, seven, three, eight, nine is now in one of these two. And again, still keeping up the kind of 
methodical approach. This can't be 4 anymore. We know where 4 is in box 4 now. It must be there. We've got 2, 5 and 9 to go in row 5, but there's two arrangements that'll work for that at the moment. Um, so still scouting around the grid, trying to find what will get us forward again. Um, probably missing something at this point because we've opened up quite a lot of stuff that could be potentially very useful. Now that's one or two. Again, it can see all the other seven digits. No, that hasn't done it. One, two, or nine there, two, nine, five, eight. Okay, so there'll be something. Um, three, nine there, can find there, four, two, seven, five. So these are from one, six, and eight. Four. Still got three to place though, so that's not that helpful. Seven. Now, I'm probably choosing the wrong boxes to look at now, but never mind. Now, that one, yeah, that was something from 2589, which form a quadruple, effectively, the remaining cells in this box. Um, nine, six, they're quite restricted here. Five is now in one of those two cells. can't be there but one can be almost anywhere else in the box so that isn't getting it done let's just keep going now the 9-1 and the 2-3 pair are yes sorry 4 is now restricted to these two cells and that's useful because now we can use this pencil mark that we did earlier once those cells must contain a 4 that's row 1 done with 4s this one can't we can fill in the 4 in this row now No, we can't finish off the row. Can we do much in the column? I don't know. This 168 seems to be a theme. Ah, now we get a bent triple here. So we've got a 168 triple in box 7. So every other cell has to be 3, 5, 7 or 9. So 5 is constrained into the top 2. Um, 7 is not very restricted. So we know that's 5 or 7 and that's 7 or 9. But can't actually get beyond that. Sorry, that bent triple would often be a marker of something that really is going to be helpful, but it wasn't so much here, which is fair enough. Um, yeah, it's not it's not totally straightforward this puzzle, unless I'm as again as I say, missing something at the moment. There's every possibility of that. Nine, that's two, five, or eight. Um, ah. 5, yes, sorry, that 5 restricts 5 to one of those two positions, so this can't be a 5, and that is very helpful. Now we can finish off the central row, 5, 9, and 2 there. Um, that 5, no, the 9, yes, that places 9 here, that gives us 3, this must be 7, that must be 5. So that little 2 by 2 section that we restricted, it was suddenly became very useful. Uh, we get a 3 here. That allows us to fix the 3-2 pair that we got early on. That 2, no, that's going to turn up in one of those two cells, and I don't know which one yet. Um, we've got 7 and 5 to place, and they've got to go in column 2 in those two cells. So. We can actually put them in because there is a 7 in one of those two rows already. That gives us the 5 in box 2. This is 6 or 8. Still not quite sure which way around that's going to go. Now we have a 6-8 pair, however, in column 5 now. Let's just remove that old pencil mark of a 5 and that one of a 7. They're not helping anymore. 6-8 pair looking at this cell, so that's a 5. And we can finish off the box there, last cell in the column. And what else have we got here? A two and a three to complete the box. That 
8 comes out of there. Now there's a 1, 6 pair in row 8. And we can fill in 7 and 4 if I could type. Uh, 8, 4, 9, 5, 7, 3. We've got 1, 2, and 6 to go. That is a 1 or a 2. And therefore, 8 in the row is here. That lets us finish off box um, 4. We've got a 6, 9 to finish over here. Let's get rid of the pencil marks there, the corner marks. And we've got 1 up here is in the last naked single, effectively. 2, 1, 6, one, six, eight, one. All the bottom six boxes are done now. That's not a one, so the one in box one is here. Six, eight pair, so that's the four. Um, and these six eights are resolved by the eight and six down here, looking up at box one. And that is the puzzle that Eric was stuck on. Not too difficult at all, I think. There'll be some very fast times on that puzzle. Um, and the best in the world will probably get it done in about two minutes, I would imagine. So that's something to aspire to if you're really interested in uh, competing at the top level. So a very straightforward puzzle today, just kind of a tutorial in how we go about looking at classic Sudoku positions and finding how we pencil mark, finding pairs and triples, all that sort of thing. It's relatively straightforward if you approach it in a reasonably methodical way and that's why we recommend the use of the two different types of pencil mark because they just help see your way through these things. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again um, for something a bit more complicated. They're perhaps not as complicated as what Simon did earlier today, uh, tomorrow. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you then and uh, just, just check it and bye for now.